Boys, none of us want to end up working in an air-conditioned office slaving away at an Excel spreadsheet for $12 an hour. When we were young kids, we were not like, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a fireman. I want to be a nine-to-five slave punching in numbers on a spreadsheet. But here's the thing. When you're first starting out with an online business, if you're anything like me, you wasn't born into a very rich family who, you know, you have a backlog of money just sort of sat there so that you can rely on that while you're currently building an online business. You need to actually continue to make money whilst also building a new revenue stream, which is a fantastic pursuit to go on. And you have my utmost respect for even thinking about it because a lot of people, they have their conventional job and then they go home, they hop on Fortnite with the boys and they don't think about any of this stuff. So you're already well ahead there. Firstly, I want to tell you about how I did it. And this is going to seem like a bit of a sob story, like, oh, boo hoo, Sam. But that's not what I'm trying to achieve by telling you this stuff. I'm actually telling you this stuff because I want it to empower you. I want you to know that if I was able to do it in my set of circumstances, and you certainly can. As I already mentioned, I was born into a very poor family. I won't talk about my family life too much because it's very personal, but I promise you, <laughs> I absolutely promise you that things could have been a lot better in the household. When I was 15, I started to become very depressed. I was already a slightly introverted person. And I think by just being that slightly introverted person and perhaps a little bit autistic as well, because I was uh, a bit slow to pick up on social cues. I think that was enough to sort of start my snowball into major depression and major anxiety. So from the ages of 15 to 22, which I are my prime years for actually building a business, by the way. I was completely unconscious, honestly. I was not alive. I was simply just existing day by day. That's the only way I can describe it. And maybe you can relate to that right now. And if you can, I promise you it's gonna get a lot better. But you need to become your own superhero, okay? And I hope this video helps you in doing that. My anxiety and depression got so bad that I genuinely could not leave my house without having a panic attack. And there wasn't a single night where I didn't think about unaliving myself as soon as I got into bed. It was really bad. I was really, really down bad, guys, okay? But again, this is not a sob story. I'm just telling you this because if I managed to pull myself out of the gutter, then you absolutely can as well. I truly believe that I was supposed to be, you know, cannon fodder. If you have a think now about the people around you, not people that you necessarily like, but just the people around you, your associates, right? A lot of them are gonna seem like NPCs to you. They just do the same things over and over and over again. Like they've got like some bugged quest line or something. Like, yeah, if I continue to go out every Saturday and get drunk, then something good will happen to me, surely. I'll just continue to do that. It's like they're, they're bugged. And that was supposed to be me. 100% that was supposed to be me. But I feel like I am some sort of glitch. And I think that's actually Luke Belmar's branding, but I'm stealing it here because it's actually very fucking smart. I feel like a glitch. I was not supposed to be like this, but I brute forced my way out of the map. <laughs> okay. I remember there was a particular sort of time period where like I was particularly down bad. I was really down man and uh, I was living with my mom and my mom was very very concerned for me and my mom had taken me through three different therapists and these therapists like they didn't help and I don't blame them entirely I don't actually think therapy is is that great if you're in that position but I don't blame the therapists because frankly I wasn't ready to speak about what was going on in my head and you need to want it yourself to actually make a positive change but they all failed and I was just super down bad and my mom said to me that she thinks I should go on antidepressants just so I you know uh, don't hurt myself and I sat on the stairs I remember this vi vividly. I don't remember much from those days vividly, but I remember this vividly and I was just sat on the stairs just sobbing for like 20 minutes. I really didn't like the idea of um, putting chemicals in my body which altered my um, brain chemistry. But I feel like if I hadn't done that, um, maybe I would have done something very Silly. The transformation I've made in the last three years or so um, has been nothing short of absolutely extraordinary. And a massive part of that transformation has absolutely been the accumulation of money. The freedom that comes with money because you start carrying yourself in a completely different way 
when you realize that you're your own boss, you can do whatever you want, you can fly to whatever country you want, you can buy time back into your life, you can buy things for your loved ones, you can help your mom pay the house off that she struggled with for so long. The rich people who tell you money doesn't make you happy are lying to you. It doesn't make them happy because most of the time they actually sold their souls for it. Firstly guys, if you wanna make any sort of money online, you need to assess the digital landscape. And the reason why it has to be digital is because because if you find a job, for example, in the UK that pays really well and that's amazing and stuff and you can maybe like farm up some cash but like you're stuck in the UK then. Like they need you in the UK and if you're anything like me, you certainly don't wanna be in the UK with, with the way it's going right now. So it needs to be a digital job. It needs to be something that you can make money through the internet, Wi-Fi money. So when you're accessing the digital landscape, which is actually very hard, you need to be very involved in the landscape and have a lot of mental clarity to figure out where exactly you fit in. But you need to see what's growing in popularity, first of all, because that's going to rise in demand. Supply, demand. You supply for the demand. And then you need to extrapolate that timeline of events for what's growing in demand and then choose where you fit in. Because there's usually a few stages before the final result is delivered. So for example, making a Coca-Cola can, there's the creation of the ingredients, there's the manufacturing, there's the shipping, and then there's the selling. There's four stages there, and there's probably a lot more, but again, you need to have a lot of knowledge in the landscape to be able to actually see this stuff, and I am not knowledgeable on Coca-Cola. And then you simply need to position yourself playing to your strengths. Where are your strengths lying in that Coca-Cola lineup? Maybe you know a fuck ton about shipping and you can get Coca-Cola to a brand new country, which it's never been before, it's never been sold there. Obviously Coca-Cola's a bad example because they're so dialed in and they've, you know, they're dominating the world already, but like, let's just pretend they're not doing that. Like if you're really knowledgeable on shipping and you see a hole in the market, like, oh my God, Coca-Cola, they don't sell Coca-Cola in Canada and Canada's got a lot of money and I can ship things to Canada. That's where you're going to position yourself to make a lot of money. If you look at Coca-Cola, it's just a flow of money, flow of money. You just need to plant yourself somewhere in the middle of that. I've already assessed the digital landscape. I've done it for you. And of course, I strongly suggest that you assess it yourself as well, if you can, because humans have differing opinions and I have a whole bunch of biases. My time growing up on the internet has been well spent on, you know, the content creation side of things. I've been very passionate about that since the very beginning. I remember when I was 13 years old and I used to watch uh, Yogg's Cast, uh, which is a Minecraft YouTube channel. And this shit's very embarrassing, but like me and my friend at school, we were like, yeah, I wanna do that too. I wanna make Minecraft videos and make money. So I sent Yogg's Cast an email pitching Yogg Youngers to them, where it's essentially just them, but the younger versions of them in me and my friend. And we just make fucking Minecraft videos and squeak down our microphones. I've always been very passionate about content creation. <laughs> <laughs> so in my assessment of the digital landscape, of course, I'm going to focus on that side of things, but there's plenty of ways to make money on the internet, plenty. But in my findings, content creation is absolutely fucking exploding. Everyone is creating content everyone. Businesses, influencers, there is a constant influx of content going out onto the internet every single day. Because the more time people are glued to their phones, the more content is needed to quench their thirst for dopamine, okay? And it doesn't even have to be dopamine. It can also just be good, knowledgeable stuff. I'd like to think that I mix a good bit of knowledge in with, oh, this is a semi-entertaining video to watch, which is what we want. That's, that's what I want. I don't want my video to be super fucking boring. Like a university lecture, I do want to inject some of my personal personality into it, but I also don't want to fucking destroy your dopamine receptors because I understand how damaging that is to you. And my goal is to help you make money. So I certainly don't want to destroy your dopamine receptors. So I hope you appreciate that guys. <laughs> Here's a timeline for content creation. The individual or the business, again, the business, because even businesses are hopping on this massive, massive, massive corporations are now producing content. They create a raw video, you know, that for example, this right now, I'm, I'm creating a raw video right now. <laughs> when I finish recording this, it's gonna go to the next stage, which is the post-production, which is the editing, perhaps thumbnails. And then finally, the content reaches the target audience. And the target audience is very important because if I edit my video or if I perform in my video in a way which doesn't resonate with my target audience, it's completely useless. So whoever edits the video needs to do a really good job of actually editing it in a way which is gonna resonate with my target audience. Where the big bucks are made 
is in the post-production. I've been editing for over 13 years, but it was only until about three or four years ago when I decided to actually, you know, destroy my own limiting beliefs that, oh no, I can't make any money on the internet. No, I'm not good enough to be a video editor on the internet, where I started to actually offer it as a service so I could start making some money. I started experimenting. I was working with just the worst clients of all time, including a massive GTA 5 YouTuber that a lot of you might know, who was just an absolute dickhead biggest dickhead of all time just so needlessly mean completely destroyed my self-esteem at the time because i was just starting as well i made a lot of mistakes which cost me a lot of time but eventually after all of that experimenting i spent a lot of time you know figuring this stuff out and building a blueprint which works for video editing which actually makes money i found my client hamza you might know him. <laughs> when I started working with Hamza, he had 500 subscribers and he was paying me 10 pounds per video. We were both on benefits in the UK. We were both completely broke, but Hamza had a dream. And as an editor, I did a fantastic job of buying into that dream and making sure his content reached his target audience. That's my job as a creative because Hamza could have the most knowledgeable shit of all time, but if he doesn't present it in a way which is gonna reach his audience, it doesn't matter. Which is why we created the Jeff and Adonis format. The guys who need to hear Hamza's empowering message are going to be the type of guys who are entertained by silly little animations comparing one extreme side of self-improvement to another side of extreme self-improvement. Jeffrey and Adonis. As you can see by this graph I'm putting up on screen now, you can see the start point of when I've started working with Hamza to where we got to. Okay. You might be thinking like, Sam, it must be very fruitful to uh, help someone build a YouTube channel like that and to uh, edit all of their videos and also scale the hierarchy in their business. And you'd be very correct. It's landed me a lifestyle of complete and utter freedom. I can work wherever I want, whenever I want. And it's all thanks to me smashing all of my limiting beliefs and just getting started on video editing and offering it as a service, which is a whole new ball game. You can be the best editor in the world. It doesn't mean you're going to make any money because you need to know how to make money from it. It's a whole different ball game. I can go wherever I want in the world now. I can help my mom pay her house off. I can buy beautiful gifts for my girlfriend and my loved ones. I can buy my friends dinner. The amount of self-confidence and the way I carry myself because I'm able to do those things is an absolute game changer. And people don't talk about this enough because it's not romantic to think that a lot of your worries and problems are actually solved by just making more money. But it's it's true. It's much more comforting to think that like just meditating, you know, 10 minutes a day is going to solve everything. And it will help, but it's not going to update your self-image to the point where you're carrying yourself like you're an absolute boss. You just feel so good. You wake up and you're ready to attack the day. You've got high testosterone. Now, as we've discussed, the big bucks made when the content reaches the target audience. And where they're made is when the raw video is recorded. You know, your client's going to make a good amount of money too. And you're going to position yourself right in the middle of that money stream. I want a piece of that cake. Video editing is absolutely the best side hustle to start in 2024. As I say, content creation is absolutely exploding. Everyone is producing content. Even your mom might be making Instagram reels. Even your like normie friends are making Instagram reels, okay? Everyone is making content. You need Wi-Fi money. You need to be able to make money from your laptop anywhere in the world so you can escape the jurisdiction of your tyrannical government. Get the fuck out of there. Spend your money and your time and your energy where it's actually valued and live a lifestyle of freedom. The networking for video editing is absolutely ridiculous and I'll tell you why, okay? If you're the man behind projecting someone's image of themselves on the internet, you are automatically going to be very valued by that person. Hamza valued me so much because my job was to essentially make him look good and smart on the internet. When I first started editing for Hamza, Hamza's actually very well spoken, by the way. He's gotten a lot better at speaking if you watch his newer stuff where he's not edited. But when he started, guys, he couldn't fucking talk. <laughs> he couldn't talk. He would stumble and stutter over and over and over and over again. You would never ever notice that though, because I did such a good job of making sure that he looked and appeared 
well spoken, which Hamza very much so appreciated. Me and Hamza became best friends and I traveled the world with Hamza. We came here to Thailand, we went to Dubai, we went to the Netherlands and all while globe trotting with one of the most influential self-improvement creators in the space, I got to network with a lot of really awesome people simply by just being Hamza's video editor. The networking that comes with being video editor is absolutely incredible. And not only that, it's also the perfect launch pad for you. If you know how to edit content, if you've been around someone who has been running a successful personal brand, you're going to learn how to do that from them directly. So that when the time comes when perhaps you want to launch your own personal brand and you want to be the guy behind the camera, you have everything you need to know to actually begin. Everything. There is not a better launch pad to building your own personal brand than this. I spent every single day with Hamza and Hamza is one of the most intelligent creators in terms of running a personal brand. I learned a fuck ton from my time spent with Hamza. A fuck ton. Completely invaluable. You enter a positive feedback loop. You're creating content which resonates with people. It educates them. Maybe it entertains them. You feel valuable. You wake up and you just feel good about yourself. I used to wake up every day and feel fucking nothing. I felt like no one cared about me. I didn't bring any value to the world. As soon as you start video editing and creating things, you start to enter a feedback loop where you see comments under the videos that you've edited saying, whoa, this is edited so well. Time stamp oh my god this is so funny you feel amazing and this is going to be massive for your self-esteem and as i've already mentioned you get complete freedom right now i could pick up my laptop and just fucking hop on a boat to some tropical island and just chill there for a week if i wanted to i can go and do whatever i want as long as i have my laptop i'm making money from my laptop that's all i need i can do anything i'm not stuck in an office i don't even have to work from home sometimes i like work from home because my home is beautiful and i've got the jungle right behind me <laughs> It's amazing. That's just huge. Absolutely huge for your self-esteem and your lifestyle. Video editing is the future. AI is not gonna replace it, guys. AI will never replace the creative human element that we bring to the table. What AI can do, though, is actually just make our lives a little bit easier. For example, with subtitling. Back in the day when I was editing, when I had to subtitle a video, I would have to do it manually. You know, every single time someone said something, I'd type the word, type the word, it took ages. AI does it like that, which is a fantastic use of AI, but AI is never going to be able to take a raw video, just a fucking unedited raw video and just turn it into a good video, which is actually going to resonate with someone's target audience. When I look at a video, I can tell immediately when someone has used AI for some parts. For example, the cutting process, because the cuts just aren't quite good enough, you know? And then like maybe there's an emotional pause that you want left in for dramatic effect, but the AI doesn't know any better because it's a fucking robot and it just cuts it out. And it's just the pace of the scene is completely fucking ruined, okay? Video editing will not be replaced by AI. AI will make video editors' lives a little bit easier, if anything. As I already mentioned earlier, I made a fuck ton of mistakes as I was learning how to video edit and also make money video editing, more importantly. There's a lot of videos and courses online on teaching people how to video edit, but there is nothing on actually teaching people how to monetize the skill and create a lifestyle of freedom, which is ultimately what we want, okay? That's what we want. The reason we do anything is because we want freedom. I used to work with clients who would give me 15 pounds per video and the video would take me like five to 10 hours to edit, <laughs> do the math. And then they would also give me free lots of revisions. Video editors find themselves in this place very often. They have no clue how to actually monetize their skill in an effective way and create that abundance aura around them so that they actually start getting paid their worth. I run an academy of excellence which specializes in teaching video editors how to monetize their skill and make bank. I'm getting as many of my students out here to Thailand so I can dominate this island with uh, video editing talent. That's my selfish goal. I want more video editor friends. I want more creative friends. Okay, that's what I actually really want. But inside of my academy, there are 16 year olds literally making double their parents salary from the internet while going to school. That is how insane this is. I'm not even going to try and hard sell you on my academy. I just want you to take a look at the first link in the description. Take a look, see if it's for you. It is an absolute home run offer, honestly. You pay a one-time fee and you get lifetime access, complete 
lifetime access, no bullshit. I'm not gonna try and charge you monthly to be inside of my academy. One-time payment and you're in for life. And I promise you, if you do join, it will change the game. Take a look at the offer below, guys, and I hope this was helpful. There's many different ways you can extrapolate the digital landscape and find different ways for you to fit into money streams to make money. That is just my assessment. I specialize in content creation. I'm sure if you're more like drop shipping inclined, you might have a different assessment, but I don't know, whenever I speak to a drop shipper, they always seem to just be like, you know, drowning in uncertainty all the time. I know for a fact, video editing is certain as fuck. Take care, boys. Oosh!